so one second. We're biting. Square your end before you go. Yep, look at square. How's it looking on your end? Okay. Yep, yep, yep. We're good. Go. There you go. That's it, isn't it? Yeah. So did you hear that? That's the one. That's the one. Yeah. Right, so is that looking level to you then? Right, so we're in straight, we're in the hole. So I think I think we can kick in now. Should we kick in? Yeah, let's kick in. Yeah. And heal it in. Nice and snug. How are we looking, Mark? We're looking good, we're all square. Yep, that's going in, yeah, that's fine. Good, good. We're in. That's the noise. Let's do it a couple more times. Ooh. No, it's going in. No, it's going it is. in. It's still going in. It's going in, folks. It's going in. That's the, noise. That's the one. That's yeah. the noise, isn't it? I can actually feel it resonating through the post. Hey guys, how are you doing? This is Zed from Zed Outdoors and I hope you're having an awesome day. So I'm at the Bushcraft Base Camp hoping to get the frame of the shelter completed. It's a glorious day even though we've literally just stepped into autumn. And I'm here with a good buddy of mine, Mark, 
Now, if you've been watching the previous videos, you would have seen the progress we've made up until now. And a few things to mention for those of you that are new to either watching this series or even my channel. Number one, this is a privately owned woodland that I've been given full permission to use. Also, the wood that we're using is being uh, sourced responsibly. So we've not just hacked down trees to source any of this wood. It's come from coppice wood, which is meaning that it's been responsibly managed. Um, and so the wood is being cut down for that very reason. Also, the only requirement I have for this shelter are twofold. Number one, it is got to last a minimum of two years with little to no maintenance. And secondly, uh, only using hand tools. So there's no power tools involved whatsoever. And with hand tools is anything that does the job, be it from your conventional axes and knives to chisels, etc. So on this occasion, we've been looking to actually finish off the frame of the shelter. Once that's finished, we can then start tackling the size of the shelter and also the roof. So let's go up close and let's show you what we've done so far and what we're hoping to finish on this occasion. So here we have the frame of the shelter, my buddy Mark. Mark. Hello Zed, how are you doing? Appreciate, Hello, you appreciate you joining me once again. My pleasure as always. So where we're at with the frame is the following. So we have put the sides in and the sides are complete. The back, what we've now done, as if you saw earlier on in the video, apologies about the sunlight glare, uh, we've now fixed the top beam going across and into the middle pole. We've also inserted that and buried that into the ground. And obviously this side is complete too. And also from the front, we've put a cross beam on. Okay, so there's only gonna be one cross beam at the front to create an opening. So the following is what we wanna finish on this occasion is, in order to get the frame complete, we've gotta put another two beams across, so along the bottom here and along the middle, and then that's the back complete. And then once that's done, a few things people have raised is in order to have a solid structure and make this a lot more rigid, we've got to have some diagonal struts. So to show you what I mean, so Mark, do you want to just hold one of the pieces? <laughs> I will do if I can get the piece. <laughs> once, <you get> <laughs> once you get the piece out of the auger bit, right? Um, so this is a few people that have mentioned this in order to make it a much more solid structure. Um, you've got to put some diagonal struts on. Here we go. So if you just hold it in place and then just kind of show you the guys what we mean. So, so that's basically 45 it. degree angle on the corner there. Obviously drilled and pegged each end. We'll have one, two, three, four, five, six, and then across the top there, seven, eight. eight. So all four sides will be uh, cross braced. So what we've decided to do with this, obviously we're using whole pieces of sweet chestnut for the kind of structure and the frame. So what we've decided to do with these uh, diagonal pieces is we've cut uh, there's the sweet chestnut to length. We've then split it down the middle with, uh, with an ax. And then what Mark's just shown here, we're obviously auger, uh, using the auger to make the holes. And then we obviously carved out some pegs, um, which you've seen just earlier on in the video. And auger the piece in here and then get that drilled in. So I think we're gonna check one piece first to make sure it works okay. We're then gonna go finish off the two back pieces and then finish off all the diagonal struts. Lovely bit of meat coming out of there. Chef style cooking. Mm. 
Right, so, we go, we're off to China for lunch today. That's it. Chinese version of uh, pot noodle. Now, it did say on the uh, on the packet here that this was hot and spicy, so... Just like your women. See. <laughs> Just like Just I like, like women. women. <laughs> and as a lunch, it was quick and easy. Again, like a lot more women. Yeah. <laughs> it's a common thing in Essex. <laughs> yeah. Right, let's give it a taste without slurping it all over my jacket. Mm. Oh, I've got one. That's nice. Mm. Got a no, it's got a little bit of a oriental kick. Mm. Very good. Love this. Mm. I'm afraid there's no elegant way to eat this, so if I no, look like isn't. a slob, I am a slob. So we've completed the main frame, which I'm going to show you shortly. Um, just want to touch on something. So obviously I've been carving the dowels. And something me and Mark have learnt with the dowels. And that is, uh, it takes a while to kind of make sure you get the right thickness to go inside the hole. Because obviously it's got to have a bit of bite. But we've found even if it's a fraction uh, too wide, it really sticks. Um, so it took a while to find out you know, the exact diameter that's just perfect to get in and give a bit of bite. Now the main thing we've learnt with this also, apart from the, uh, the width being just right, is the actual chamfering. So we found chamfering helps in two ways. The bit that is going in, the chamfering helps to allow it to glide in a lot easier. Uh, we found if you just kept it at the same width, it really stuck and it was a nightmare to kind of hammer in. So we found to chamfer it uh, from about a good inch away, so it's quite a bit, allowed it to kind of slide in a lot easier. And also a chamfering, another chamfering on the end, so two chamfers, to make it go even narrower, allowed it to kind of go in a lot easier. And also doing a double chamfer on the other side helped, that when you're hammering it in, it didn't fray. And it, it actually made a massive difference. When we only done a little chamfer, it would kind of start fraying when you start hammering it in. But by doing an even finer chamfer, uh, it got in a lot easier. So the point being, the dowels, you've got to make sure you get the width just right and a double chamfer helps uh, on both ends going in and also smacking it with the hammer. So here we've done the main frame completed. So the front beam is in place. Uh, the right hand side, all three pieces are in. On the back, all three pieces are in. And on the side, all three pieces are in. So in essence, the whole frame is completely done now. So as you can see, we've pegged it all in. Now the pegs, we are going to shape off. Obviously you can see them jutting out quite a bit, but we're going to cut them off at the end once the whole uh, shelter is 100% done. Uh, because what we found was when you leave them for a week or two weeks in between coming to this base camp, um, it actually kind of allows you on the next visit to hammer it in, even just a fraction more. So we're making sure those are 100% in place. So. The frame is now complete. Now the final thing we've got left now to complete is uh, to put the diagonal pieces in. Um, so that's what we're going to do now, just like you know, uh, Mark is showing here. Now the one thing we did learn with these is we did actually test them out, just doweling in and just kind of like putting them in its place. But we found that you know, if you didn't actually chisel in, so if I show you from the top here, so what's kind of Mark showing here. So if we didn't chisel into the actual wood, uh, we found it would actually swivel on its axis so as I mentioned earlier on in the video, everyone's been suggesting that or in the know that you've got to put diagonal struts on to give the structure strength. So that's what we're doing now. So what we've got to do now is that the pegs are all done. Uh, we've carved them all up. Now what we're going to do, we're going to um, actually carve this, uh, uh, chop this up into, I think it's two foot lengths, split them down the middle and then get them pegging in. So we've got the one side in and it's worked just fine. So now what we're going to do, so we've got one of the beams now, we've marked it up in two foot lengths. So we're going to cut those and then split them in half. Might want to add that it's a time of year we're being showered with sweet chestnuts from, from above. Oh 
Yeah. That's it. So let me hold that in. Do you want to? Yep. Give me a bit of a wallop. Right. Driller killer. Resonating. So, in the past 30 minutes, we've had a weather front coming in with a lot of rain, which is kind of eased off for the moment. So, we've just put a temporary tarp just for the moment. Just gives a bit of protection from the rain and we just got to finish the last couple of bits and then pretty much we're done with the frame and the shelter. So guys, all the diagonal pieces are done apart from the front two. We've just finished the back two which I'll show you in a minute. We had to spend the past 30 minutes just getting the tarp up temporarily. As I mentioned there's a weather front just coming. It's eased off for the moment so hopefully that will stay that way until we're finished. So I just wanted to take this opportunity to talk about a group on Facebook called Living to Learn. Now it started off by a group of gentlemen in Ireland and these are family orientated gentlemen who wanted to start a Facebook group uh, in relation to bushcraft and the outdoors that's very family friendly. And I've been observing them over the past year, I've spoken to numerous people that have been in the group and honestly they are doing some amazing work. Like I said, it's very family orientated. What's also very good about them is there are some members of the group in Ireland and in the UK who have access to or who own woodlands that have started to open it up for uh, meetups, be it on a monthly basis or on a, or on a weekly basis. But what I like about this group, which separates it out from a lot of the other groups that are out there, is that they're a very constructive group. It's a very positive minded group. Unfortunately, some of the groups on Facebook, I think they've gotten so big. Um, that's been taken over by, and I kind of say a little bit of louty kind of behavior where it's not necessarily family friendly. And I'm not discrediting any of that. All I'm saying is, you know, we need a space for where families can feel comfortable, but more so newbies as well, where they don't feel intimidated or they're not afraid to ask questions. Uh, I wish there were a lot of people out there. There's so many people getting into this space, which is amazing. So Living to Learn group, I've been observing them over the past year. I've spoken to a lot of the guys that are managing the group, and honestly, they're doing some fantastic work. And I want to take this opportunity of my own accord to give that group a shout out. I will put a link to, uh, in the description below. Go and check that out. If you like what you see, then be definitely to join that group because honestly, they're doing some amazing stuff. Like I said, they're holding a lot of meetups, but even within the group itself, it's very, very positive, which is kind of a rare sight now on Facebook. I've noticed this trend that if people are new, uh, for example, to the bushcraft scene and they're asking questions, a lot of the time they can feel gunned down and they feel reluctant to then ask questions because obviously we all want to learn. Whereas this group is not like that. I've noticed it's a very positive atmosphere in there. And I know the admin guys that are running the group, that own the group, are working relentlessly day and night to make sure it stays that way. So I want to take this opportunity to give that group a shout out. If you want a good, positive environment, be it you as a, a, a man or woman or as a family, uh, if you want a good atmosphere to kind of engage with other like-minded people, I think it's probably one of the best groups that are out there. So there's Living to Learn Facebook group. I'll link below in the description. Be sure to go and check it out. So one thing me and Mark have done on this uh, on this trip to the woods is we've resurrected a traditional technique from the Victorian area. <laughs> it's, is, is, is it called a bum cheek clamp? <laughs> bum clamp, yeah. That's it. So he's raising it between his cheeks. That's it. I'm you, clenching. You're clenching. Clenching. <laughs> and, then, and then you turn and grind. <laughs> it's, uh, from the Victorian era. That's it. Look at that, man. What about resurrecting old techniques on this channel, mate? I tell you. <laughs> How's it looking, Mark? Straight? Oh, looking good from my end. Dead? Yeah, go for it. 
okay still? Yep, yep, fingers. Beautiful. So guys, this is a monumental occasion this, especially in this video that you're watching. The last Dell in the last hole to complete the frame of this structure. Now what a journey it's been. Absolutely knackering. Mm -hmm. Learning curve. <laughs> it's been tough folks, it's been tough. But we'll do a quick tour through at the end now to give you kind of an overview on the structure. But now we've got the passing over ceremony. So, there you go. I'm going to put it in, the last dowel. We're going to have a knock each, as you do. Go on, last knock, last knock. This is our real, this is our real men knock. See it, isn't it? Yep, you're all good. You're lovely and square, both ends. When you hear that dink, like the change in sound, that's because it's about as deep as it can go. So yep. one more. That's it. That's it. Solid. That's the tap of freedom there. <laughs> So here we go guys, it is all done. So we've got the two diagonal beams across the top and the front. We've got the two diagonal beams going across in the middle there. We've got the two other diagonal beams going there. And we've got the two diagonal beams going there. As I mentioned earlier on, these were absolutely necessary to strengthen the entire structure to stop any form of movement. Now what we're gonna do the next time we're down there, or actually uh, in a few weeks time, we're gonna let it all settle in and then we've got to basically tap in all these pegs one last time because there is a still a bit of movement but as it all kind of dries off it, and then the weather changes we can tap all these pegs in and then we can trim them right off but for now this is all done it's been a lot of work what's actually made it very very difficult is twofold number one the logs although they look straight when you actually start working with them you realize they have little kinks and bends and they're very subtle so it completely throws you off. And also the big, big problem was there's a lot of knots. So here's an obvious knot. I mean, that's probably one of the biggest ones here. Um, but as soon as you start going inside the wood, the knots just create absolute havoc to drill through and whatnot. But we persevered. There's been a hell of a lot of learning curves along the way. But I'm happy with that. So there you go, guys. That is a wrap for this phase of the project. Mark, the definition well done. Definition of teamwork, I'll tell you this one. Um, <laughs> as you can see from the video, obviously there's a lot of processes involved. And actually a lot of it was, which was obviously quite repetitive. So um, I, I kind of left it out of the filming, because it's just repeating the same process that you've already seen multiple times over. You know, sawing the joints, flattening them off, um, spending a lot of time doing that. As I mentioned earlier on, the two problems that we had over and over is the actual logs that we're working with, they look straight, but the moment you start working with them and you really pay attention, you realize actually they're skewing off at different angles and sometimes quite sharply and you don't notice it until you really pay attention. So that caused havoc with trying to do the joints. Um, on top of that a lot of knots yeah so a lot of the knots were visible but actually most of them were inside the wood. Even the thinner pieces like the moment you start drilling in you know like, hang on a second why is this taking so much work and next minute you realize and especially with a chiseling it just created havoc you know. Um, but we're not complaining it's just part of the process it's been a steep learning curve we've learned a hell of a lot obviously still continuing to learn. So where we're at now is the following, is thankfully, for a lot of hard work, we finished the frame of the structure, which is a big part of kind of this overall build. Now moving forward, obviously we can start getting on with the meat and bones and the sides and the roof, etc. Yeah. So the goal now is on our next visit down, we're gonna do a wild camp. The intention with that wild camp is to do a mock-up of the layout of the base camp itself. So by that, I mean we're gonna lay out beds, we're going to lay out a, a mock-up fire pit, etc. It's important we do that now before we actually make everything permanent. So we're actually going to do a short overnight, sir, to actually make sure it's it's okay the way it is. And obviously that's the kind of perfect time yeah. 
Yeah. Now, if things need to be moved around, we can move it. So once we're clear on that, then we can start doing the more permanent stuff, you know, permanently putting in the sides, permanently making the beds, permanent fire pit, etc. So look forward to that coming up very, very soon. And I hope you enjoyed this video. As always, if you've got any feedback and suggestions, let us know in the comments below. There's a lot of things that even we know we could have done better, but it's all part of the learning curve. So I hope you enjoyed the video. A big thanks to Mark once again. Big thanks to Zed for uh, inviting me down here. I wouldn't have get to, got to have done this if it wasn't for you. So um, no, it's not just one way traffic, mate. Yeah, I've, no, I've enjoyed I, I, the process. And, and I really do mean it. Honestly, yeah. I could not have done this without. This is definitely not a one man job. Uh, 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 with this, one. <laughs> this is not a one man job. Um, so big thanks to Mark. Um, there's a lot of photos and videos I put up on Instagram. Just search for Zed Outdoors. The moment you see some dodgy looking Asian bloke with a big nose, that's it. You know you found me, right? Uh, so give me a follow there. There's a lot of stuff I'm posting up on there. And there you go. Hope you enjoyed this video. Really proud of what we've accomplished in getting this frame complete. Look forward to the next video where we're doing a wild camp. If the video's already out, then I'll put a link below taking you to that where we're going to do a mock-up of the layout of the base camp. So, as always, from Mark and myself, I hope whatever you're doing, you have a blessed day, a blessed week ahead. This is Zed from Zed Outdoors. Peace out.